Come join Libby, Molly, and Tiffany, the ladies of Consignment Chats, where we talk about all things consignment. Hey, y'all. Are you ready to chat? We are. Welcome to episode four, where we're going to discuss the five top challenges of consignment. But first, as always, we're going to start off and discuss our weeks. So, Libby, tell me something about your week. It was a very busy week, tons and tons of shipping. Um, I feel like that's all I did this week was really ship. I didn't have enough time so far for listing, so I really have to get on that and kind of rearrange my schedule. I'm continuing with the time blocking, um, so I'm going to have to block off a little more time for listing. I decided to stick with my fourth quarter plan and get up at six every morning and start my day then. I like it. I was thinking about moving it back to seven, but I'm going to stick with the 6 a.m. wake up and see if I can make it work for Q1. I love it. I love those goals, that 6 a.m. wake up. Tiffany, how about you? I'm not doing 6 (laughs) (laughs) a.m. Not for everybody. (laughs) No. Well, normally I work my um, day job Monday through Thursday and I have Fridays off. And this week I was able to have Wednesday and Thursday off. Um, So I only worked Monday and Tuesday. So I took the opportunity on Wednesday and Thursday to catch up on all the year end financial stuff. You know, I'm a bookkeeper. So I had to to finish all the, our personal family finances up for the year. And then my store finances, you know, getting all that done for the year so I can go to the accountant, you know, bright and early in January, you know, early. So that's what I'm working on. So I haven't done a lot of listing and, you know, sales are, okay but not great um so it's just giving me a lot of time to do that so I'm happy I got that done I'm jealous I'm a little jealous (laughs) I I have to do that I have to do that that's given me a little push of okay time to get serious with the finances um my week was good I unlike you guys did a lot more listings so that was nice I've got a, a nice stock of inventory that each day I'm trying to make sure I get a minimum number of items up um, each day get that algorithm going so it's it's been a, a good week any notable challenges that you think our listeners would or viewers would um, benefit from hearing about I have ship I mean shipping issues are still um, continuing yesterday I was telling the ladies I spoke with the my local postmaster here I have two days worth of shipments that are stuck in a truck somewhere Um, in the Lehigh Valley that have not been scanned other than the initial scan. Um, They, you know, she was very frustrated saying, you know, we're doing everything we can. Um, You know, everybody's working at top speed. We're just dealing with so many issues. And when things get stuck on a truck like that, there's nothing they can do other than wait and try to get through the backlog. Um, And then on a personal level, Um, we were dealing with a shipment. We have not had um, drinkable water here in our house because we need a part for the filter on our well that is also stuck on a truck. So Mm -hmm. I had to kind of talk my family down and be like, look, it's not the seller's fault. You know, just, you know, be kind. It'll get here. Um, We'll deal with it. So Mm -hmm. um, even in my own family, I had to tell them, you know, it's nobody's fault. Everybody's everybody is working as hard as they can to get these shipments, you know, through. So, right. Yeah. That was my challenge this week. All right. Tiffany. I still have the shipping issues. I have, um, uh, with, with certain platforms, you don't get paid until the buyer receives their item and accepts it. And I have lots of money outstanding (laughs) because my packages are still not, had um, issues late recently with two items that are finally arrived, but they were broken. So I have, you know, I don't know if the UPS, USPS is just, you know, in a hurry and they're just throwing packages around, <laughs> just trying to get them here when they finally do get moving. But um, so I've had to deal with some customers that are not happy because of the weight and then the broken. And so it's just not fun. <sighs> but Tough. my Christmas presents for my son finally arrived. Oh, <laughs> so. oh good. A little 2021 gift. Yeah. (laughs) That's great. 
So for me, mine hasn't been shipping, thank goodness. Um, personally receiving, yes, it took forever. We finally got our final Christmas gift in this week too. My husband's jeans came in. Um, but for me, it's been still working on my scheduling and motivation. I'm having a tough, when I'm in it, I'm in it. But if I take a break, it's getting back into it that I'm, I'm having to recharge. And so that's something, a personal hurdle that I'm just working on is, is motivation to be able to take an hour of a break, but then get myself back in it just as eagerly and positively as I started the morning out with. Uh, which has always been a battle of mine. I'm a morning person. Once I get past lunch, I it's it's a, a struggle. So that is my 2021 goal. I'm going to beat that. I'm going to have a, find my way to have that same drive and energy from one to four o'clock that I have from from eight to twelve. So I'm going to get it. But. All right, I like that. <laughs> so this week we're going to discuss the our top five challenges in consignment. And I want to start by letting you know that as with many things we've talked about in our first several episodes, we're kind of giving bullet points of things because each one of these in and of themselves are, are their own episodes. There's so much to talk about. So we're going to touch on them to give you an idea, especially if you're starting your business, of things to think about, things to contemplate, things that, that may come up. And so you can start kind of thinking it through, but know that there will be a future episode where we go into a lot of detail on those. Um, so the five, top five challenges of consignment, before we start with number five, Libby has a quote to share with us. Um, our quote this week is Henry Ford, and he said, failure is only the opportunity to begin again, this time more intelligently. So I, I think that really applies to getting through some of these challenges. They are all hurdles that we can, we can all get through. We can all, you know, jump over, conquer, but maybe not the first time we try. So um, even though these, these are challenges, we can definitely, you know, keep going, talk about them. Um, come up with solutions. There's nothing that we can't conquer in these challenges, but it is going to require That's work. That's great. <laughs> yeah. I love it. I love it. All right. We're going to start with number five. Number five in our list of challenges with consignment is payouts. And this will be for the two of you. So Tiffany, would you like to start on payouts? <laughs> I guess I don't really have many challenges with payouts, um, but I, it, it, well, you have to keep track of it. That's the thing. Um, tracking um, whose item is what, you know, stuff like that and the pay, I wanted to pay out. Um, I, I, I have a, one person that gives me a huge volume of stuff. So I pay her out every month, but then I have other people where it's a smaller number of, of items. So I, um, hold the money until they, they, you know, it piles up to a, something that's a good number or they ask for it. Mm -hmm. And um, it's just basically communicating with your consigners about what they would like. Mm -hmm. yeah. So Libby, I know you um, have a larger base of consigners. Um, what can you share with payouts? Basically, you just need to track it. I've tried um, and used many different methods of payout. I would do paper checks once a month. People um, would come in and pick them up or we would mail them out. That wasn't really great for us. Um, people just wouldn't pick up their checks or they would get lost or they would forget about them. Um, so real quick, how many consigners yeah. when you were doing paper checks, I'm sorry to interrupt, but it just comes to me. When you were doing the paper checks, how many consigners were you doing that with just a ballpark? Were 10, 15, 200, 200. 200. Wow. Um, the course of a month about, about, about that. Um, okay. and then we moved to, um, sometimes we would do cash payouts when people came in. I, I liked that. That was great. But now being all online, um, we have an inventory system that, that tracks the payouts and um, at the end of the consignment period, the consigner can get paid. We either mail them a paper check, we do Venmo or PayPal, depending on, you know, what they, what they prefer. And um, okay. if they requested um, payout sooner, then we, um, we do it electronically or just do a small charge um, for a paper check. 
And right. that's seems Do you to work for us now. But I would say just have a plan. You know, you know, you're going to pay people out at the end of 60 days or, you know, whatever your consignment period is, or you're going to pay once a month. As long as you have a plan that's consistent and you can let, you know, consigners know that's what to expect, I think it's fine. And I know some of the places like the online um, platforms, even with people who are selling on those will say you can't cash out until you have a minimum of X amount in your account. Mm -hmm. You know, they make you wait until $20, $50, whatever. Um, I think that would be more difficult, but there are people, you know, there are platforms and things that do that. You know, you can't cash out just a $10, but but a 20, mm -hmm. once you hit the 20 yeah. mark, you can't. So that's just something else to think about. Right. But yeah, yeah. All right, so number four, Libby, I'm going to go to you on this one. This is contract terms. Oh, okay. Um, and basically, um, just have a contract laid out. You know, I keep a copy of all, all the consigner contracts. Um, I try to keep it electronically just because I don't like all the paper sitting around. But um, in just basic terms of consignment. Now, how I actually ended up developing my consignment contract was a friend of mine owned a consignment store and she was, you know, kind enough to share what had worked for her um, and laid out the basic terms. And then I just kind of tweaked that throughout the years. Um, you know, things you might want to put in there and we'll do a whole episode on this or, you know, um, how much the consigner will get paid, how they will get paid, um, you know, there is no insurance on consigned items. So people need to know if there's a catastrophic event that, you know, their items can't be recovered. Um, let's see, what else? Um, the days of consignment and what happens to the items after the consignment period is over. So there's just a couple items to, you know, touch on when you do a contract, but we'll do a whole episode on that and maybe even um, put some templates up uh, to help people develop that. All right. All right, this is one we've touched on before um, and we'll touch on it over and over again, I'm sure, is number three, managing inventory. So I know, again, the nice thing about this group of people is we're all at different levels of what we do. So Tiffany, I'm going to start with you and how you manage your inventory. I have a, um, a large Google spreadsheet, <laughs> a very large Google spreadsheet and I have every item on there and numbered and then there's a um, the numbers are consecutive for every item that comes into my store and then I put the consigners initials after the number so that becomes my skew when I put it into eBay or whatever I put the number with the initials also on my spreadsheet I color code the lines the row co rows based on who's consigning it so um, I have different colors for different people and um, then I also, I probably over track things because I have the Google spreadsheet, but I also keep every item in Asana. And I have, um, when the items listed, I have a, a, I don't know what you call it. They it used to be called a Kanban board, but, but it's a list board in Asana where you have columns. And so everybody, every item for one person is in one column and things like that. And it's got a picture of the item, the description. Um, and then I keep in the details about when I listed on eBay, when I listed on other platforms, and that's how I keep my, um, my helper, my assistant, um, knowing what's going on also. And then she can update what she does to that item and things like that. Wow. And that, right. that storage, when I store it now, I used to store it by consigner, but now I'm switching everything to the shed. And so when I move things to the shed, I'm just doing everything in number order, no matter who consigned it, because it'd be much easier for me to find it that way. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Libby, how about you on managing your inventory? So we have about, I want to say about 7,000 items now, about 5,000 5, and some unique items. So it's definitely, a challenge, but I overcome that challenge. I, there's a specific software I use. It's called Simple Consign, and I will definitely be talking about that more because it has. I've been through a couple different consignment software um, programs, and this has definitely been a, a savior uh, as far as inventory management. Everything everything gets listed and barcoded, and the software does track it by consigner. Um, but basically, and if somebody's just starting out, I think a spreadsheet 
and an idea of how you're going to organize things um, as you move forward. Because a lot of people like look back and they're like, oh, I really wish I had something organized in the beginning to build on. So it's maybe just put, you know, a little thought into your spreadsheet. Um, again, we may have some templates that we can put up to kind of, you know, help you along mm -hmm. with that that line, but just something, just have something in mind of how you're going to manage your inventory going forward. So it doesn't become a headache after the fact. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. Yeah. Okay. And then storage for you with managing your inventory. Storage. That's a lot of items to store. <laughs> yeah. Um, storage is basically uh, clothing is by gender and then by size. Um, stored in the poly mailers and so I could just pick and ship it um, and those poly and everything is grouped in Ikea bags I love my blue Ikea bags I think a lot of resellers use those blue Ikea bags they're they're my favorite um, way to store because they can get smaller or bigger and you're not stuck with a bin that you know is is a certain size even if it's not filled All right because when we were in the storefront we used to use the um paper boxes yeah. that that one of our consigners would come in from our office all the time with the empty paper boxes and that's what everything in the back room on the shelves would store and I would make labels that would say women's XL and we would stack all the bags in there of the women's XL and you had all, all along the wall you'd find your box but yeah the Ikea bags makes sense because sometimes those boxes something would tip back because there'd only be one in there and you yeah. think it's empty and yeah being and then I size. also sell a lot of um, home goods. So I just have a section that's all like China and home goods. Um, I have the third floor of my house. It's like a partially finished attic where I keep all that. And then the house I'm in now, I just happen to, I live in the country. I have a very large barn. So I keep all my furniture and large goods out in the barn. Yeah. Great. And for me, I'm, I'm kind of a little different. I'm in between um, with my inventory. I get the benefit of Libby's um, simple consign software because I work through country consignment at my location. Um, I, however, also do a spreadsheet um, that my husband loves. He's my numbers man. So he loves to keep up with the spreadsheet. Um, so he does the spreadsheet of the inventory and then my things are stored. I'd have to look to see how many items I have. Um, I have no idea. I guess probably a couple hundred. I don't have a ton yet. I'm, I'm getting there. Um, but I store mine downstairs in his office, which is my old office since I got moved. And when I moved up here, um, I told him, since he's kicking me out and I'm coming up here, he still has to keep the inventory down there. So I have long clothing racks that have all the clothes hanging on them, but then I have um, a Refab West bought from Conscious Consignment, big chest of drawers, and I keep all the jeans folded and pants folded in the drawers and the shoes are in the side. So I just use the shelving and things down there. I don't have any, I'm gonna have to come up with a better way soon because my inventory is growing and now that I'm back in 100% will grow, grow, grow. Um, I'm gonna push even more. So I am gonna have to, by the time we make this a full episode, I'm really going to be taking notes because I'm going to have to redevelop my my management of my inventory. So. Oh, that'll be fun to follow along. And I can't wait yeah. to get a tour yeah. of Tiffany's inventory, her new inventory shed as well. I know. I know. That's We're fun just stuff. filling up. <laughs> All right, ladies. One for two. Up. I just, well, I just wanted to point out that um, Libby said that she has like 7,000 items or so. And I only have like 700 so, right so far. So I wouldn't say only 700. <laughs> that's, well, that's pretty significant. Yeah. I probably have about another 700 to be listed. So <laughs> great. It's going to grow yeah. fast. It's going to grow yeah. fast. We're like the, um, the three bears, right? Like it goes from me to Tiffany to Libby is our growth, you know, where we are. <laughs> But um, anyway, all right, so ladies, we're going to move on to number two, and this is one that we all struggle with, and I imagine any of our listeners and viewers will say the same when they get into it, is mm -hmm. keeping up. Well, keeping up is hard, <laughs> and, and um, because for me, you know, I've only been part-time, and it's just, I keep giving, getting, I keep just, I don't say no, so I keep getting more and more and more stuff, and I, it's just, it's really hard. It's, I don't even know 
what to say about it. <laughs> it's a challenge. It's such a challenge finding the time. I mean, I work constantly and I mean, I barely relax and I still can't keep up. So I'm hoping this will change and be easier when I'm working full time on the store. I'm hoping I'll be able to actually take some downtime and <laughs> relax at some points, but um, I, don't, I don't know what else to say about it, except that it's just really a struggle. <laughs> Yeah. Libby? Um, yeah, I mean, since the day we, or maybe even before we opened, <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's been a struggle to keep up. There's always been, you know, more than we can handle. Um, one of the methods we put in place in the storefront, which we keep now is, you know, by keeping appointments. And it's not uncommon for, you know, me to um, say to a consigner, um, yes, you know, we're a couple weeks out before we can take, before we can take those items or, um, you know, you're welcome to drop the items off. However, um, we process everything in the order in which it's received. So you might be, a, it might be a couple weeks before you see those items on your account and just managing those expectations because, you know, people want it and they want it right away. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, so you have to be very clear, I think, up front um, about that and not afraid to say, you know, no, we just can't right now. I think right. people respect that. I think people do respect that. And they maybe have a little more, um, what do I say, like respect for you as a business person if they have to wait a little bit because right. it is an in-demand service. Yeah, That's what I was going to say. It's kind of like, you know, that, that item that's, selling out you got to get your hands on you know it's hard to get if it's hard to get you want it more you know so if it's a way to get your consignment it, you want it more you want to get it in there and get it to you more um yeah okay so number one i gotta do my drum roll again y'all i need to get like a little horn or something oh yeah we um, <laughs> number one and this may be a two-part episode when we actually really start breaking this one down oh yeah it's <laughs> To simply say consigners, Libby, I give us a little bit about your challenges. It's important to remember that consignment is a service industry. Your consigners are your customers. And, you know, what they say, customers are always right, even when they're wrong. Um, so, yeah, you just really need to, to look at it in that respect that it, it is a service industry. There is going to be that difficulty um, there are unique challenges in dealing with consigners. Um, you know, my advice going in was, you know, is proceed with caution, set your expectations with your consigners, let them know that you are not a magician. You are not doing anything special. Um, you are providing a service and that is what your, what our commission as consignment store owners is we are we're being paid for the service of going through the items of consigning the items of absorbing the costs of selling the items um yeah so i think i mean there are so many stories don't be afraid to say no to somebody do not be afraid to say no if you have a bad feeling uh just you know go with it i think we've learned that one over and over over and over, and over again and Libby, give, give one of those lines that you use when you're trying to step away from a consigner that you felt those, those red flags, red lights. Yeah, um, I do say, you know, consignment isn't for everybody. Um, we don't do anything magical with your items. Um, yeah, it's just not for everybody. You know, if you feel that you can sell those items on your own, of course, you're going to do a little better. You're going to make a little more money. We're just providing that service. And hopefully, you know, hopefully they decide to kind of step away and decide it's not for them. They say some of our best consigners are people that have sold themselves because they know yes. how much work, what the fees are. They are totally respectful of what we do and the commission we take to do so. So I agree. I agree. Tiffany, do you have anything to add to the challenges with consigners? Well, because I sort of, um, sort of kind of fell into the consignment thing with friends. Um, I, 
I so far, so far have not ventured out. I don't have any consigners that I don't already know personally, or I didn't already know personally before they gave me items. So I haven't, I mean, I don't really have my, well, I guess my problem still is I don't say no. <laughs> so <laughs> it's I hard. Do. We keep learning that one over and over and over again. <laughs> And unfortunately, you tend to learn the hard way because you just get, you shake your head and grab yourself and go, why did I not go with my gut? Because unfortunately, they, they teach you the hard way. I mean, I just, sometimes people just want you to get it done a little bit faster than you can get it done. And, and they want sales faster than they will come because, I mean, my philosophy is everything sells eventually but it will take time. Some of it will take time. I mean, you can't give me, um, a, you know, a de depression glass and expect it to sell tomorrow. Like it's a long term item on, you know, on, uh, when you put it up. So um, that's just kind of my th thing that um, I tend to internalize and then I feel guilty because I do know these people so I feel personally guilty that I haven't gotten it up faster. And I know people want, want it and want their money. And, um, but I'm doing the best I can with the time I have. So it's all you can do. It's all you can do. Yeah. 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 And it may come to using Libby's term of maybe consignment isn't for you. You're welcome to, you know, give it a shot yourself and, We've had that happen before in the store where somebody's like, well, I'm going to sell it myself. And then about a month and a half later, <laughs> we see that we would see them come back in and yeah. yeah, 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 they learn. It's, it's not definitely not for the week. That's for mm -hmm. sure. So that was our top five of our challenges with consigners. And now we're going to move on to, I think what is becoming one of my favorite parts, because this is, I think what we all love and why we're in it is for community and collaboration. So we are now going to move on to the chatting with our community. So, um, I know we got a message from a, um, a business person, a consigning person on our, on our social media page. So Tiffany, do you have that question available that you could read it to us? I do. And her question is, any tips on backgrounds for photos? I find flat laid to be challenging with the bigger pieces and I can never seem to get the lighting right. I'm currently using a fabric mannequin with some old fence pickets as my background. Any other ideas? Photography is a good question. And again, another big episode. Um, Tiffany, I know you and I both responded to her on that. Um, my response was, it's, it's such a tough question that you really have to break down in an episode because every item is different. Um, sizing makes it different. Gender makes it different. Is it a handbag or a, you know, 30 inch necklace? Is it a vase? It's, it's all very different. Um, right. My advice to her for the bigger items, she was talking about laying things flat, was I, I believe that pants should always be photographed flat. Um, and I did send her a couple of um, images of some and ways that we make the longer pants work in a full on picture. But sometimes you even have to break those down like a, an uber long scarf. I had that happen to me this week. I had a really long scarf, mm -hmm. but it's the exact same color tone and everything as my mannequin. So I didn't want to put it on the mannequin. So I have this antique um, coffee table that's a dark wood that I got at Conchi Consignment. <laughs> And I did it in folds and did it in different ways in folds. Um, eventually, I will, I will figure it out. In fact, now as I'm talking it through with you, I realize I need to dress the mannequin so that there's a color background and then do the scarf. I don't know why I didn't think about that until just now, but to put a black shirt on it and then do the scarf um, so that it's on the mannequin. But a lot of it is... problem. <laughs> yeah, a lot of it is trial and error, I think, um, with... with pictures and things and and you talk about you know ebay now wants everything to have the white background and we've had this discussion where i do like the look of stores that have all the white background to it i think it's very cohesive and beautiful and i can see where they're going but in a discussion with this libby you made a good point about 
the personal backgrounds? The personal backgrounds, um, you know, there is a counterpoint that, you know, Google definitely likes white and that's why like eBay feeds their stuff to Google and they prefer that. So that's why eBay says, you know, they prefer a white background. It's actually um, spurred on by Google. But um, there are a lot of shoppers, especially on eBay, that want to feel that they are buying from a real person as opposed to like a large corporation, a large business. So sometimes, you know, a, a personal background or a non-white background can work to your advantage if you're targeting those kind of shoppers. They are not lucky. They prefer and they kind of, you know, look through, look past uh, ones with the white background. So it's kind of a, you know, personal choice. You can see both sides of the, of the issue, but yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, back to you, Tiffany, on your response to her. I know you had some feedback to her question too, what your advice was. Well, I, just to start out, um, I got a very inex expen inexpensive um, clothing rack from Walmart. And you can just like, literally, it raises up and it extends out. And so it's compatible, you know, I mean, not compatible, collapsible, sort of. So you can just set it because I had to, you know, take put my photo stuff up and then take it down because it was in my dining room. So I did, you know, always putting up, taking down. So I put that up and I just hung a really inexpensive white shower curtain on it, similar to what's behind me right now. And that is what I did behind my mannequin. And um, that, I mean, it works fine. You know, you, the, yeah. it reflects light and everything like that. Now, I am going to be upgrading here soon when I get the photo set up here in my office, but it's not up there yet because my husband's still here. He's not out yet. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, when I do that, then I will, um, I bought a professional photo white backdrop that I'm going to nice. hang on the wall before. Yeah. Because my walls aren't white, so. Nice. Yeah, I think just to remember, like, it's better to have it listed than to not have it listed. So if you're really, like, struggling over the photos and you don't think you have a way to, you know, list, do your best. Do your just best. Get it up. Yep. List, you can, you know, go back and do a professional photo if it doesn't sell in the meantime. But don't get too hung up on it. I mean, it's nice to have wonderful photos, but don't let it stop you from from getting the item listed. And I find with the new background remover option on eBay, I will remove the first picture's background and let the rest be my natural background. Um, and that way, for like what you were saying, Libby, they see both. So you've got the clean, crisp white, but the other pictures are whatever my natural background was. So they see it's in my home. Um, so. Anyway, now back with some more of our chatting with our community. Libby, you had some other um, conversations to share. Yeah, just like um, little community chatter online. Um, I've been hearing and I know somebody personally that is closing um, their brick and mortar and transitioning to online. So um, that is in our current situation with the pandemic. That is something that I think a lot of people are looking into doing is possibly closing their brick and mortars, building up their online business. Um, I did that for four years ago, not because of the pandemic, um, just because I was looking for a new, um, a new space to rent or own. And I, I just stuck with online because it built up so well and so, um, so quickly. So I can definitely help people through that, um, answer any questions you might have, but it is definitely um, something we're going to address and something that I think a lot of people might be interested in. Yeah. Great. Thanks for sharing. So, so if you enjoyed uh, chatting with us today and, and want to continue chatting with us, you can visit Conch listen to me, Conchi. These CCs get me every time. <laughs> you, you can visit consignmentchats.com to connect with us and find ways to keep up with us. Um, so ladies, as always, it was fantastic chatting with you and I look forward to next week. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Thanks for joining Libby, Molly, and Tiffany, the ladies of Consignment Chats, as we talked about all things consignment. To learn more and keep chatting, Find Consignment Chats on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Facebook, and Instagram.